Hello. We are live. Getting everything set up here. Just double checking, make sure everything. Hello, Faith. How are you? We are getting all set up. I finally got this thing to work in landscape mode. <laughs> I think I did anyway. Um, welcome, everybody. If you're just joining us, this is our third live uh, episode on Facebook for the Lumber Society. Woot woot! And um, I'm Chris Hyde. I'm your camp master. Camp master, and uh, I'm excited to be here for another event. Tonight is all about survival mindset and survival mentality and psychology, things such as that. Um, before we get started, I just want to let you all know that we are representing Buzzmill tonight. Um, we are now on YouTube officially, Buzzmill is. Um, you can get on YouTube and uh, just go Buzzmill Coffee, I believe, is what our subscribing name is. So just click subscribe. You'll see these types of videos as well as a lot more. We're going to be doing, um, this Tuesday, we're going to release a video on there, both Facebook and YouTube, about fermenting um, uh, fire cider. So I almost said kombucha, but that's a later video. We're going to do those and release those to y'all, especially right now with more people than ever wanting um, immune boosting support. Uh, so we're going to do a fire cider thing next Tuesday. So if you've never made fire cider, if you've always wanted to try it, next Tuesday will be your opportunity. Uh, it'll be a real simple video. Um, we also just wanted to let you know that we did listen to what y'all's requests were about uh, opening and starting a group, and that group is going to be on Facebook. Um, we potentially might go uh, another route in addition for you know anyone who just isn't on Facebook. You know, maybe we'll just have a, some kind of other hub. But for now, everybody can meet on Facebook, uh, and that group is called the Lumber Society community chat group and so that's the place where if you want to post photos of your adventures post photos of your animal tracks you find post photos of your cool skills that you've been working on knife carving projects shelters you built all that stuff can go there uh, it's different from our facebook page because obviously the facebook page facebook looks at our page and goes oh well you're a business you're trying to advertise so when we post something like hey there's a special event or there's a special opportunity to come do community stuff they're not always getting to you because algorithmically Facebook's like yada yada. But if everybody's in this Facebook book group and we do a post, everybody's going to see it. So there's no more y'all missing out when you say, hey, you know, we, we, or we didn't hear about it. And we we're like, well, we did a Facebook post. And it was like, oh, well, we didn't see. So in this group, if you join, once again, the name is Lumber Society Community Chat Group. And this is where all the troops can meet um, and discuss their outdoor survival subjects that they'd like, share their pictures and anything else, ask questions uh, and communicate within your community. So um, we will be, like I said, um, dropping some pre-recorded content coming up, and that's going to involve edible plant talks, uh, walks, um, carving, all kinds of cool, fun stuff that we've got planned and that I've already been making videos for, actually. I was just editing some plant walk videos today, actually. So I'm excited to be releasing more than just these live streams, but I really do enjoy the live stream for the mere fact that it gives me like instant engagement with the audience, with you, the, the troops, right? Uh, finally, don't forget that Buzzmill Riverside is continuously uh, opening uh, more and more. So take out and delivery. All your Buzzmill faves are still available a la carte, plus do-it-yourself craft kits and all the delicious offerings from the three trailers that are there at Buzzmill Riverside. So JNL Barbecue, uh, Plow Bow, and Plow Burger, all still offering um, food and takeout. And we would love to hear from you, um, all of you. So again, join our Facebook community group. And you can also check out our menu, a full menu at buzzmillcoffee.com. Uh, if you're enjoying these live events and you would like to help support Mr. Chris and Natureversity, you can Venmo me any type of donations that you want. These are obviously free, but any bit helps right now. Um, currently, Natureversity is in limbo because we're waiting on the city of Austin to give us the thumbs up so we can do our summer camps. And as of right now, Governor has said camps can proceed forward, but the city of Austin, uh, coupled with the Parks Department, they're kind of saying no. So we're like, I'm getting scared because Natureversity is kind of like, uh-oh, okay, now we're starting to get into the danger zone. But anyway, I think we'll be just fine. I think June 8th uh, will be our very first week of camp, and we should be doing just fine. We're going to keep our camps really low this year, meaning we're only going to have six to eight kids per little camp. 
Um, so if you know anybody out there who wants childcare and wants to get outside, we're going to be at Roy Guerrero Park, just right down the road from the Lumber Society um, all summer long. So if you got any little ones that you want to send to do nature stuff outdoors with us, come on down. We're going to be real, keeping it real small. And check out natureversity.org if you want to learn more about that. So, without further ado, we are here to talk about survival mentality. We're here to just talk about survival mindset. Um, and I always, as you know, um, love quotes. And I, I'm going to start this one out with a quote. And, and I highly recommend this book. This comes from a book uh, by, the, by the name of Deep Survival. It's by Lawrence Gonzalez. And the quote says, Survival is the celebration of choosing life over death. We know we are going to die. We all die. But survival is saying, perhaps not today. In that sense, survivors don't defeat death. They come to terms with it. And I really think that that quote right there sums up the entire mindset for what we're gonna talk about tonight which is the, the attitude that each and every one of you has when you find yourself in a situation where you're uncomfortable, where you're stressed out, where you're pissed off. Because every single day in this world is survival. If you really, really think about it, every day that you're on this planet is, is a task for you to survive. You have kind of, well, I like to look at it kind of like we're all living in a zoo that humans created so that we can be really comfortable, right? Because if we were to really try to go out there and live in the woods, we would quickly realize like nature is not really like evil, but it certainly isn't like this wholesome love you all the time being either, right? So you're kind of in this like, I gotta, I gotta move with it. Um, so with that quote in mind, um, I, I wanted to kind of um, start off by just saying, you're lost, you're alone, and you're with no gear, right? What's your immediate thought? And just comment, you know, what would you be thinking? Are you, pan are you the type to panic? Are you the type to get angry? Are you the type to place judgment and blame? All these things you, you really honestly ask yourself because the more you are honest with yourself, the better idea you have of how to kind of fix and re-hardwire the brain so that it's easily uh, manageable when it comes to doing the survival type stuff. And I've got the comments open, open so anything you're commenting, I can see. Um, so again, no gear, it's a crappy situation. You're lost, you're alone, um, but without a will to live, you are dead already. You are, it's just how it works. Um, if there's no will to live, there's, there's nothing you're going to, to continue to do. You've pretty much given up. So where does that will to live come from? That's what everybody always asks. It's like, well, how do you negate that? And I always tell people it's just a passion for life. It's a passion that comes from your heart. And I don't want to say that and hear all the whole audience go, oh, whatever, so cliche. But it's so true. Everybody who's always like, yeah, you know, your brain, your tools, your, your brain's the number one thing you need in survival all the time. Yeah, it's true. But really a heart and a passion for life, I think, comes before that mindset, right? I want to see my family. I want to see the next day. I want to see... Uh, you know, what's tomorrow, every single thing I, I want, I, I, I want to see that. So that attitude, right, that adaptability approach and that awareness, those three things, I keep always harping on y'all for the attitude, adaptability, and awareness. That's the kind of mindset that you want to have, okay? That's, the, that's always you want to have, um, think about when you interview people or you ask them or you watch interviews or you watch survival TV shows of people being interviewed, when they say, hey, what was it like? There's never a person who was like, yeah, I panicked and I got angry and I threw temper tantrum and I went completely nuts and everything turned out fine. It's always the story is this, this man or this woman who says something like, well, I had to keep it together. I had to keep it calm, right? I had to maintain my poise. I want to bring your um, attention to those two girls from California, okay? I, I, I think... Those two little girls, five years old and eight years old, went off for a walk one day. That's it. They were in their backyard. They went out for a walk. They start drifting off aimlessly, kind of, right? And lo and behold, boom, they're gone. It's over. It's the, the parents are freaking out. Families are panicking. Police are involved. Search and rescue is getting called. 44 hours later, these two little girls are found. Now, 
when they interview the two little girls, the eight-year-old girl simply said to the family, the young five-year-old was screaming and crying and hysterical, and I just kept telling her, think happy thoughts. Think about mom and dad. Think about the cats and the dogs. Think about all your toys. Like That little eight-year-old girl had the mindset. Not only was she surviving for her life, for her own life, right? She was surviving to keep her little sister alive too. That's the kind of mindset that we always have to adopt instantly within a crappy situation. And I'm, I'm going to tell you honestly, I am a person who suffers from anger, right? I suffer from uh, depression sometimes I'm, and being just all of the motions. But over my years of practicing survival skills, I've slowly gotten to this point where now when things piss me off, I'm not really, like road rage, for instance. I, I, I was the most road rage fanatic, like just, right? Now I'm like Zen cucumber, dude. Cut me off, whatever. I'm kind of like, cool, dude. I'm just not, it's not worth it to me to risk my life or anybody else out here's life on this road to, to have that anger, you know, kind of, uh, make myself feel better. So, so you you put those emotions to the side when you find your situation, find yourself in those situations. So again, t think about those two girls um, in in California. And if you want to look that story up, it actually has just happened a year ago. So look that up. Two girls in California. Um, so now the question then we know right what, what what the mindset we want, and and then now we kind of figure out okay, well we're panicking and we don't want to panic. So how do we avoid that panic? Well. What is panic? Panic is fear to me. Panic is fear without logic or reason. And most importantly, panic is, uh, is fear without a resolution, right? It, there's no solution to this fear and this problem that you're having. So some of the fear factors uh, would include things like, obviously, we're all afraid of dying, okay? Discomfort, uh, being alone, uh, darkness uh, of the unknown, right? Uh, punishment, people like the elderly and kids sometimes when they're lost or they get separated, they, they actually think punishment for some strange reason, um, which is, I guess, I, I guess I understand why. Uh, embarrassment's another one of those things. Think about me. If I was this, uh, you know, oh, awesome survival dude and then I go out in the woods and I die, right? That's one of my fears. Like, oh, well, I'm kind of, you know, what if I was in, I'm super embarrassed that I would die? So that's a fear that I have. So with all of these things, these fears, comes this increased heart rate, this rapid pulse, this shortness kind of of breath, um, shaking, sweating, all these things. Now those are used specifically in moments where they need to be used, right? So if you need to run quick, if you need to react a certain way, if you need to think fast, you know, th that's what all those things are going on. Th that's why all that's taking place. But if you let that stuff take control and get a hold of the steering wheel and now it's the only thing that's driving, you're in for a disaster. And again, read the book Deep Survival. It's got numerous stories of people who didn't make it as well as people who did make it. And just reading and assessing those individuals and the choices that they made and how they made those choices based off fear or illogical thinking or uh, panic or whatever it was, some of those people died and some of those people got out. And it's amazing to look at the mindset of, of those individuals. So, um, again, we, they're designed to help us, but how do we control or minimize this panic? How do we do that? That takes an old survival trick. And I'm just going to share this one with you because it does help for everybody who's starting out with these skills. But that's the acronym STOP. S-T-O-P. STOP. Sit down. Think. Observe plan, right? Stop, S-T-O-P. Sit down, think, observe, plan. So you're going to stop yourself in your tracks. I've realized I'm lost. I haven't seen my group in a long time. I, you know, in, in whatever situation you're facing, you're just going to stop. That's it. Now, sit down, take a deep breath, close your eyes, breathe in again, okay? Drink some water if you have to. If you've got even like a little one of those, uh, like, you know, quick fire kits, like one of those light my fire kits or some kind of jet boil or something, make some tea, do something. If you have anything at all to just kind of stop your mind from racing into panic mode, do that, okay? Um, and just be present with yourself for just a moment while you sit there and, and, and begin to think, okay? That's the next step, think. So you're going to ask yourself, are, are, am I facing any immediate risks? Am I facing any immediate hazards? Are there anything 
that I can use right now to have simple, simple solutions to these simple problems that I'm facing. So if I'm cold, obviously a jacket in my backpack. Not, you know, what, what can I stuff inside and around me? What can I do to get warm? That's my immediate answer. It's my immediate solution. How do I stop myself from getting colder? Um, what are my options as far as the situation it goes? Uh, again, take a deep breath, right? You're still sitting down. You're still thinking. You want to feel the sense of confidence come over you of knowing that you've A, either practiced these skills, okay, B, have some kind of kit that you've prepared, uh, we talked about that a couple weeks ago, or B, or I'm sorry, C, you know definitively somebody's going to rescue you because you made a really good plan. You, you talked with somebody about where you were going, what you were doing, and you can confide in that and trust in that. And that should put your, you know, sense of, of calm back, back to you. Um, but again, you know, continue that thought process of will to live. The next thing you're going to do is observe, right? You've stopped, you've sat down, you've thought a little bit about what your situation is you're facing. You're now going to begin to observe and look around you. What do you see that's near? What do you hear that's near? Um, you know, there's been lots of moments where, you know, I think I'm lost and then I kind of start looking around and looking around. And I'm like, wait, is that a telephone pole way that is like, I'm not that lost. Okay. So you, you immediately start observing. If, if you have to think about anywhere that is immediate that, you know, could you build a shelter and is there anything to build a shelter with? Is there water nearby? Is there fuel for a fire? Is there fuel for, um, you meaning food? Um, there's lots of things that you think about when you begin this observation process. What current weather conditions are you looking at? How much daylight is left in the day? Um, what's the temperature going to be this evening? There's so many different questions that you want to ask yourself when observing. But the only way to get good at this stuff is to go outside constantly and do it, right? When it's pouring rain, I challenge you. Go try to start a fire in the pouring rain. Go try to build a shelter in the pouring rain. Go try to navigate your way through the pouring rain. Do anything at all in these situations that are controlled because the more you do them, it's just like practice tests, okay? The more you get uncomfortable, the, by the time the real test hits, it's not going to feel as uncomfortable, okay? So the last thing uh, for our stop is plan. That's P, plan. What that means is you... Uh, and your mind are somewhat organized now, hopefully, through sitting down and thinking and observing um, and what the best plan of action is using those resources as well as the time left available to you. Um, so there's two questions, right? Do you stay? Do you go? What are the readable available resources? Did you observe properly and assess the situation at hand and make the most uh, appropriate decision of staying or going? Think about those two girls who, eight and five years old in California, they decided to stay. Their 4-H survival group uh, that they were a part of in California taught them, if you ever get lost, just simply stay put, right? And that is a, a true statement, and that's what Search and Rescue will tell you. And the reason the Search and Rescue tells you that is because you're building up this kind of little uh, area around yourself that has a scent, and that scent gets stronger and stronger and stronger. But as you move, that scent gets less and less, and it's harder for those dogs and um, the search and rescue folks to find you, according to them, after all the classes that I've taken from them. But um, so that's your stop plan. Stop, sit, uh, think, observe, plan. Okay, sit, think, observe, plan. That's real simple. There's a lot more of those types of acronyms out there, um, but look up and, and uh, do, some, do some research. I'm sure you'll find some more. So moving on, um, a couple of other things while you're doing your stop technique. Again, I said uh, you can lay down, you can make a fire, you can you know roast something if you've got something to cook. Any, a fire mentally in survival is so amazing and just how it brings you this peace of mind. I don't know what it is. It's, it's like caveman TV. There's just something very comforting and nurturing about a fire. Me personally, I think subconsciously we see that entity and we know that that's another living entity next to us and there's comfort in that. A fire breathes, it eats, it, it, it consumes, it produces wastes. The only thing it doesn't do is sleep and drink water like we do. Um, so I think building a fire is a great tool to do whenever you're you're finding yourself in a panic-stricken mode. Just stop and calm down. If you really think about it too, 
when you focus your attention on something for a long time, fear and panic and stress and worry, have you ever noticed that all that stuff kind of goes away? And like, let's say you're getting out of a bad relationship or something and you're still thinking about that person and you're just like, dang, but then you find yourself doing some hobby you haven't picked up in a long time and you're like, wow, this I haven't thought about the stress or the anger or the hurt you know, in, in a long time. Focus your attention. Focus your attention. That's the mindset that you want to have as a survivalist is be productive and proactive uh, to improve your situation, obviously. Don't make it worse. <laughs> so um, coming back around to a mindset that a lot of survivalists have um, that I've met, and not so many that I have met, you, you kind of get two, two extremes here, okay? On one side, you've got like the Taoist hippie tree huggers, and then on the other side, you've got like the radical slash and grab, I better have my kitchen sink in my backpack too or else this bushcraft adventure is going to suck, right? And you don't really want to be on either one of those things. To me, the, the, the tree hugging type nature is going to take care of you people. It might create this, this thought of pacifism in your mind in a way that's like, it's okay, just blend and ebb and flow with nature's beauty and harmony and, and all this stuff. I've heard this. I've been to survival schools where they literally, this is what they tell you, but then I've been to the other side where they're like, just cut the whole forest down and build a city. And I'm like, I don't think either one of those things is the solution, man. But the idea is somewhere in the middle to me. So yeah, live in harmony, but at the same time, utilize the tools and the mindset of getting yourself out of that situation that's uncomfortable for you, right? Um, so a um, couple of exercises you can do, okay? A couple of exercises that we can all do. Uh, and, and what this really does is just kind of helps the brain become more of a survival type-esque brain, right? And obviously we're, we're always surviving, like I said earlier, that comment and that quote that I read to you all. But this first exercise is going to th- be about problem solving. And this hopefully will spark a lot of you out there to kind of re-examine the way you solve problems, hopefully. Uh, the next time you're faced with a problem, anything at all, big, small, medium, whatever, step aside and observe the way you've reacted to that problem initially. Were you pissed off? Did you feel helpless? Were you, you know, hurt? What was it? What, what instantly did you feel? And, and write that down, right? The next thing you can do is just learn from it. Like even if you felt you reacted appropriately, observe again and again and again, and just constantly stepping back and looking at the way you handle situations will really show you what kind of mentality that you have. That'll put you into this context of, okay, so let's say I'm actually lost, right? When I found myself without my phone the other day and, or Google Maps wasn't working and I couldn't get directions, like how did I handle that? Was I pissed off? Was I angry at the phone? Like how did I manage? So again, little things like this Think about those and and be mindful of how you react. You're going to be growing exponentially, hopefully, in a positive way because now your mindset's going to be this more calm demeanor, this less stress demeanor. If you start going out into the world and practicing these skills, I have taught people how to make fires thousands of times. And I've taught people how to make fires so much that I've seen every type of reaction to fire making. I've seen the super angry, pissed off dude to the, I I don't even want to twist the spindle into the string because I'm not strong enough, you know, woman. And, and And I'm not saying she wasn't strong enough. I'm saying she didn't believe in herself. Right, so you've got these two chasms, but you you want to kind of find that happy medium balance, okay? Um, so that's kind of problem solving, just basically acknowledging how you react to a situation and then, and then observing it from an outside perspective. Uh, oh, and by the way, ask your friends how you re- react too. Get their feedback because sometimes you know it's kind of like a weird thing the way we um, understand ourselves. I always, I always ask for uh, external feedback from people. Uh, the next thing is facing illness. This is one of my favorite things to do. And you're probably going to be like, man, Chris is crazy. Why would you do that? But f- next time, uh, every time I'm sick and the next time you're sick, try not complaining about being sick, right? Try to be like, oh, I'm going to see if I can get this done like while I'm sick. And I know you're supposed to be resting and you're supposed to be healing and you're supposed to be doing all these things. But that's the idea, is to see in stressful moments, in moments of uncertainty, in moments of uncomfortability, what are you capable of doing, 
right? That's, that's the question we're all asking ourselves here in, in the world of survival as a lumber society is how capable are we? So the next time you're sick, try to push through and do something. To, I'm not saying go out and get other people sick, but meaning like around the house and, you know, pick up your chores. I remember a couple of times I was sick and my roommates were like, just, just lay there, dude. Just don't do anything. We'll take care of everything. And I felt really gracious that I had such a community. But then later on down the road, I was like, no, 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 no. I've got this. I got this, man. I'm fine. I'm fine. And they were always like, okay, well, you know, I just, I wanted to push through. I wanted that mindset and I wanted that attitude and that confidence to believe in myself. If I got into a crappy situation, I could keep going. Um, next thing is comfort control. This is where a lot of y'all are going to go. Yeah, right. I'm not doing that. That's nonsense. The idea here is to continuously torture yourself. <laughs> and what I mean by that is continuously find a way to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. I'll give you an example. When I was younger, uh, my mom and I living in a house, we didn't have AC for a few summers. And I've never been so freaking hot and miserable in all my life. But now I teach outside in June and July and August summer camps outside for kids and I'm fine. Whereas normal people in Texas are like, are you crazy? You know, um, but it's totally normal for me to be just hundred degree heat and fine. Um, I think with adequate water, anyone can go anywhere in the world and be fine. Uh, but make yourself uncomfortable, meaning try to get less sleep sometimes here and there. I'm not saying do this for your work week, but if you've got a weekend, right, where you're like, hmm, let's see what happens. Like stay, uh, sleep only a few hours and then go do some job and see what happens, right? See if you could push yourself. This is what this is all about is, is fun, controlled atmosphere and, and setting um, while pushing skills. And that's, a, that's all I had for those couple of exercises. You want to learn skills if you're starting out that can apply to everything. That's the most crucial thing that I teach people as of right now. I just did an interview with a couple of folks uh, about an hour before this. And one of the things they were asking me was like, what can people who get started right now in this world of survival and stuff, what can they do? And I always just tell people, you know, don't look at it like that. Like look at it in the big term, look at it in the big picture. The big picture is we need to slowly find a way to make our homes and our houses sustainable, right? So like, don't just learn the survival skills, like actually study water and where it comes from, like how you can get it at your house, study edible plants more, like study how to grow gardens, study how to harvest uh, sunlight, study, study all these different things. Don't just study the survival skills, but study skills that can be applied in a wide variety of areas. We talked about um, bushcraft survival bags last week, and we were talking about tools that you bring with you that aren't just one function tools. So if I've got a pair of pliers and it only crimps things and grabs things, well, it's like, that's it. But on my multi-tool, if there's a pair of pliers, well, now it's a multi-tool of saw, uh, you know, sandpaper, scissors, a screwdriver. There's a lot of tools in that little thing, plus pliers, right? So learn skills that can be applied to a lot of different areas. Um, I don't have a big list in front of me of what all those skills would be, but you see what I'm saying and where I'm going with this. So uh, with that, I just want to open it up to any questions that any of you may have. I also wanted to check in with everybody and ask, did you start a bushcraft journal? Did you start a lumber society journal? Did you start a nature journal? Have you used it? Uh, did you go out and pick a little spot to do your sit spot at? That was from a few weeks back, one of our very first live streams. Um, did you put together a bushcraft pack? I put, put together um, one for, for lumber society. It's got all kinds of little goodies inside there. Um, yeah, let's see some comments or questions or anything else. And uh, if not, we are, that was all I had for this evening. Don't forget, uh, you can Venmo at Natureversity if you'd like. And don't forget to check out buzzmillcoffee.com. They're still open and they're taking orders to go. All kinds of cool stuff is going on there. I don't see any comments. Am I like notes or my chat turned off? I'm gonna check on this other thing real quick. Maybe chat's turned off. Let's see. Oh no, it's a feedback. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay, I see one comment here. It says, I would think, what would Chris do? What would Chris do? I don't know, what would I do? <laughs> so it all depends on the situation. I think my worst fear is probably the like Arctic tundra. 
you know? I was uh, laughing to myself earlier because I wondered as I was looking up stories of survival to share with y'all, I was wondering if there's anybody who out there who's ever been in like all of it, like every survival situation you could imagine at once. Like some dude who gets into a plane and crashes, right? Um, and then he it, it, it crashes in the ocean and gets attacked by a shark while he's like, <laughs> then, then he gets hypothermia from the water, uh, struck by lightning once he reaches land, falls off a cliff, uh, gets attacked by a bear, and, and then he finally makes it to a hospital and he, and he, and he lives, right? Could you imagine? What, I, I want to know if this guy lives or this woman exists. Okay, I'm seeing a few comments here. Um, looks like says, Natureversity reads backwards on the paper. Oh, it reads backwards on the paper. That's weird. Oh, that's strange. I bet I, let's see. <laughs> is, is that better? Is that, does that work? <laughs> At Natureversity. Uh, a couple more comments. I started my nature journal so far. I have one page on poison ivy and blue jays. Yes. What did you learn about blue jays? Blue jays are fascinating birds. They're so, they're so loud and noisy and obnoxious. If you're one of those people out there who's trying to learn bird language, don't start with blue jays. Don't start with trying to figure out what they're talking about. They're kind of just squawkers, and they're just going to complain and gripe about things they find around is what I've noticed a lot. Like I, I always see them going after snakes. Anytime I see them like congregating somewhere, I'm like, usually there's a snake over there. And uh, rat snakes are often in the trees when I see them. Um, very cool. So if you haven't joined our Facebook group. It is the Lumber Society community chat group. Look that up on Facebook. And that'll get you access to all the different little PDFs and downloads and videos and other things that we're sending out. If you have any questions about a survival mindset or mentality that you'd like to ask, now's your chance. Um, once again, I hope y'all are enjoying all these live streams. I'm really enjoying them. I'm in my office tonight. Uh, I'm usually in my kitchen doing this, but tonight I wanted some books behind me and my bows and I'm going to slowly set this area up more and more to have little nature kind of lumber society-esque stuff. I think we're going to do a live stream from the buzz mill soon, which will be cool. Hopefully Mark and I can do that. Um, let's see. We've got a question here. Looks like it says, uh, Chris from Christy. A couple weeks ago, we were hammock camping. The first night was hot. The second night was freezing. We went in survival mode. Packed as much as I could around me to keep warm. Yeah, hammock camping is weird. I'm the exact same way. The first time I went hammock camping, I thought this is going to be sweet. And then I froze my literal butt off because of the convection, right? The wind going underneath you. Now they have these Eno hammocks where there's some kind of like zipper and you put this pad in there. And then it, you know, prevents the convection, the, the wind going across your bottom half from freezing you to death. Um, but yeah, hammock camping's fun if you've got, you know, ways to keep warm. Okay, um, thanks for sharing that, Christy, by the way. Uh, I, okay, it's from Diane Fox. It says, I have been taking pictures of all the bugs and animals I find on my nightly walks. Oh, awesome. If you have been taking lots and lots of photos of nature and you have not downloaded an app called iNaturalist, right? iNat, you just type in literally I, the letter or I, and then N-A-T, iNaturalist. Get that app, and that's the greatest tool for amateur citizen naturalist science because what you're going to do is you take your phone and then you take a picture of something and then you upload it to the little database. And once it uploads there, anybody else on the planet can look at that research that you put on there. So for instance, let's say you are wanting to make a bark basket and you need to know a specific type of tree to make the bark out of and you don't know where that tree exists. You can go to iNaturalist, open up the app, click the explore button, type in the name of the plant or tree that you want to look for, click search, it'll show you everywhere around you where that tree may or may not be, right? Well, not may not be, but it'll show you where that tree is at around you. And then you can go and look for it. And if it's, you know, something like privet, for instance, that's what I harvest the most bark of. It's an invasive exotic plant. So, you know, the city really loves us taking it out. So um, look for that and use that app, iNaturalist. It's a wonderful tool. Also, if you're an animal tracker, this is the best tool for animal trackers because all you got to do is type in whatever animal you want to see the tracks of. It'll bring up where people have seen those tracks and send you straight there. So really exciting there. Um, 
Finally, I've got a wildlife tracking video that I'm going to share with you all. After all that heavy rain that we just had, I was over tracking by uh, Buzz Mill, and there was a lot of animal tracks over there. So I'm going to share that video with you um, next Thursday when we have a break. So I hope you all all have had a great evening. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation and this discussion about survival mindsets and mentalities. Thank you so much um, for all your contributions and for participating in this. If you have any questions, feel free to join our Facebook group. You can leave them there. I'll be uh, adminning that. You can also post anything you need questions answered to on iNaturalist if you simply upload it and then click uh, I need ID help. That'll get you that ID help. Uh, my name on there is just Chris Hyde, just like it's spelled. And look for me on there. I hope to see you all on there. Y'all have a great evening. Thanks so much for another wonderful night. And we'll uh, y'all stay safe. We'll see you hopefully soon. Thanks, everybody.